All right, hey everyone, Wonderbot here, and welcome back to the Neuronet Mendax proxy demo. I, uh, I want to play more of this. A it was really good. The security force Hi. wants us to develop hardware for them. They're a pretty secretive group. Should we take on the contract? I'm going to say no, just because sketchy. No. The Jean Ye Botanists Club want your help for their research project trying to revive Bellis Perennis. Interested? Yes. Even with your help, they're able to... Unable to... Uh, sorry. Even with your help, they're unable to reliably replicate the flower's DNA. However, it results in the creation of a new species. People oh, that seem nervous cool. about the quantity of data you have access to. How should we address this? I... Uh, you know what? I'm just going to play morals and if it screws me up, it screws me up. Complete transparency. Complete transparency. To avoid backlash, restrictions are established over what you can access without permission. The public response is favorable. The council wants you to replace the parking administrator. The current one doesn't understand the nuances of canopy parking. Yes. The nuances Kairos referred to are mostly Katina's wealthier citizens wanting the warden to turn a blind eye to them. One of the oh. underground recycling depots is no longer operational due to major mechanical failure. What should we do with it? Repair. A Canopy District Bank would like to integrate you into their security comms. They would love a Night Warden who doesn't get tired. We already had that one. Sure. There's an upcoming Sky Riot I, tour. We already did all of these. The opportunity to sponsor a pilot. Huh. However... The Council wants to overhaul the Shentalar subway, but it'll take a while, unless we get involved. Should we invest? Yes. I think it's ready, Val. You keep saying that. I feel like it can do with a few more days. Val, trust me. Have I ever let you down? On second thought, don't answer that. Okay, so I think we stopped looping questions. That was weird. I guess I quit at a very odd time. That brings a smirk to her face. I guess you're right. It's the engineer in me talking. Better pack it in for tonight, then. We can talk next steps tomorrow. Kairos puts on his coat and moves to, moves to exit the room as Cordo steps in. Ah, oh, there you are. We were starting to get worried. Busy times. Thought I'd check in. Well, if you have any suggestions, be sure to take it up with Val. <laughs> Kairos pats Cordo on the shoulder as he leaves, whistling a ditty to himself. Val, is it now? What of it? Never mind. What's got you in a mood? I wonder if I'd say anything. What would happen? I'm gonna say nothing. I I don't think I'm supposed to know. I have some bad news. So, you finally decided to tell me about Pershaw. How? Our pal over here shows me things. She gestures to you. Cordo glares at your terminal. How do you know about that? Video surveillance. Wait, you have access to cameras outside this room? Which cameras? Oh, this is worrying. All of them. He turns to Estival. You hooked it up to the security grid? The only thing I did is put it on the guest network. Everything else, it figured on its own. Hmm. We're getting off track. What about Pershaw? I told you to wait until we were ready, didn't I? I thought I had it. The pitch was solid. But the bastard only looks out for himself. What a shocker. Huh, what a shocker. Estival gives you a curious glance while Cordo nods enthusiastically. 
I know. He's had it in for me from the beginning. So what now, Big Shot? Don't tell me we've done all this for nothing. I'm not sure. Give me a minute. Cordo looks at you questioningly. About those cameras. Can you access their archives? Demonstrate. You bring up a recording from earlier today of Cordo trying out different hats in front of the mirror in his office. Okay, okay. I think we get it. <laughs> Cordo's eyes glaze over as he ta taps his chin. What are you thinking, Devin? One moment. He turns to you again. How about the building's comms? Do you have records and history of calls? I'm going to keep demonstrating. You play a call between Estival and her daughter, Elenai, talking about her school day. The discomfort on Estival's face is clear. Cordo turns to Estival, a smile on his face. That's it. Shaw's scum, but he keeps it behind closed doors. He jabs a finger at your screen. This is how we bring him down. I'm in. Seriously? You're going to blackmail the CEO? Is this your master plan? Wait a second, listen. No, you listen. This is abhorrent, and I won't hear another word of it. I like the emotion they've got on that. That's that's some good portraiture. Look, Esteval, these corporate types don't respond to anything else. These corporate types? Just listen to yourself. You're using them to justify the exact same behavior. Yeah, I was hoping I could use spacebar. Last time I was playing fair, I almost got us cancelled. How is that going to help us? A and how are you going to help anyone when you become one of them? Look around you, Devon. She spreads her arms, the animated Minecore logo outside lighting the side of her face. Is the status quo good enough for you? So what if it is? How am I supposed to win if I'm not playing by their rules? Esteval shakes her head. This isn't a game, Devon. What you're talking about has real consequences. If the foundation of your choice is exploitation and hate, then you're no different from Pershaw himself. Cordo's nostrils flare. Esteval meets him with a face of stone and he deflates. What do you want me to do, Esteval? Just hope everything works out on its own? Of course not. You always act as if you're alone, but you're not. Come on, I have a plan. The pair stay long into the night, talking about tomorrow's events. Once they depart, you're left to ponder over their debate. Esteval said I would find my true voice, but what does that voice have to say for itself? What do I believe? Porto is arguing for results by any means. Esteval for integrity of character, which is more important? Absolutely integrity. Integrity. Even if that means I have to fail to achieve means I fail to achieve my goals. That's a toughie. I you know, thinking about this from the perspective of I mean, quite a lot of different things. I think the problem is, once again, this whole Boolean thing is tough. You know, what is... And I think my answer is going to be kind of yes to some degree, maybe? I, I was talking about this earlier, how, you know, a lot of people that tend to be on the power-hungry side of things tend to do whatever they... Oh, ow. Um, they tend to do whatever they can to gain power. And oftentimes, good people don't do that. So you often see, you know, oh, let's go with uh, high power businessmen will often skirt tax laws and bully, you know, other businesses and stuff 
Whereas, you know, a more ethical business won't do that. And unfortunately, the free market just kind of rewards the more power-hungry one because mainly... <laughs> I mean, I'm thinking Blizzard right now, you know, they, they have... Gosh, what? Was it four lawsuits? They've settled one for $18 million, but that's like a drop in the bucket compared to how much money they make and how much money they pay Bobby Kotick. Like, if the only penalty for your crime is a fine, then that's only a crime for poor people and a surcharge for the rich. And so I feel like in this situation, it's kind of tough because it's like, from my own perspective, it's kind of difficult to justify pure ethics sometimes because the high road sometimes does not get you all the way. And it sucks. It sucks because it's like, do what is most important to me, my goals or my ethics. And I think that goes back to nuance of, well, what am I pursuing? You know, am I just pursuing success? No, then I think my integrity is more important. If it's just success or power or money. You know, in that case, is I don't, I don't need to compromise my integrity. You know, sure. Uh, let's go with YouTube, for example. This has been on my mind a little bit. You know, I might never make it to a million subscribers. And that sucks a little bit. I think about this often, where it's just kind of like, I, I just might not make it. I might make it. I mean, I'm not even halfway there. I'm over a third of the way there, but I'm not even halfway there. And I've been doing this for eight years. I mean, I guess that means just go for another 16 and hope I can do it. <laughs> I mean, honestly, that's not actually the worst idea in the world. Like, I maybe could pull it off. But most channels, you know, usually peter out after a certain point. And I've gotten this far without, you know, putting my face cam in... Face cam? Well, I mean, without face cam, you know, without doing those really crappy, like, clickbaity thumbnails with my face going, Whoa! You know, the Macaulay Culkin face. I feel like that face is the face of clickbait. I don't know if anybody's really identified it yet, but that that is clickbait before clickbait was even a thing. And... You know, there's a lot of other kind of ethical things that I don't do, you know. Try not to... Gosh. I mean, I keep reading about these really giant YouTubers, millions and millions of subscribers, trying to convince their fans to buy into shitcoin or whatever, effectively to slow pump and dump, squeeze their audience for whatever they're worth, and then sell their coin and leave them holding the bag. That's the whole point of it. And it's like, it's frustrating to see those people getting ahead but at the same time I always question myself of like but are they actually getting ahead or are they just getting more money and I mean money money can buy happiness up to a certain point but I think at this point these people are just empty and so I'm gonna go with I don't know because I think it once again it really depends on your goals you know if, if you're if your goal is saving the world you know, how far are you willing to ste uh, stoop to save the world? I don't know. You know, I'm... I don't know. But at the same time, there's always another way. Yeah. What if my integrity allows others to take advantage of me? Oh, that one's tough. <laughs> Oh, man, that one's tough. So, I might not... I, I mean, I got a couple of skeletons in my closet, but I've definitely always tried to be the nice guy. I'm always the giving friend. Uh, or the therapy friend or something like that. And that always frustrates me a little bit. Because more often than not, what that involves is me being the friend that goes way out of my way to be nice and to... Uh, to be nice to people, to, like, give them things, to make them feel included. And almost always, it's always absolutely just ended up as a stinking pile on my plate. Literally every friendship that I've had has usually either ended quietly because I gave up or ended badly because they turned 
mean? And maybe part of it is because I changed or something like that, but I'm thinking about like... <laughs> oh gosh, I... I have... I'm not gonna say mild PTSD because I, I feel like that once again is... Yeah. It undervalues what other people have over what I have, but I was in a semi-bad uh, head-on collision back when I was in high school, and it's always left me really jittery in cars. Um, and so... Ooh, that was a whistle. Um, and so, like, I really do not like being in cars with people that drive erratically. Uh, starting, stopping, speeding, texting while driving, especially, like, a bunch of things like that. And so, with a number of friends in college, they would do that. And, you know, I was... I was... I didn't immediately say, like, no, stop. You know, you cut that shit out. I mean, obviously, they were driving, so I can only do so much as a passenger. But... You know, to some degree, I, I kind of just let them do it and then just resolve myself to never be in the car with them again, which worked. But, you know, one day I said to myself, like, screw it, I'm going to actually confront one of these friends because I consider him to be a good friend. And almost immediately he just spat in my face and ended the friendship right there. And it was just like the scummiest shit. And so, it, no. <laughs> what if I can't beat them in an honest way? Yeah. I mean, it really depends, because this can apply to a bunch of different things. Say you're playing a friendly game with people. No. But if it's going to be shitheads, yeah, I, there was a very validating moment recently where I saw one of my friends, uh, one of my ex-friends, uh, getting called out publicly, and his response, like, some somebody would be like, you know, aren't you the guy that did this shitty thing? And he's like, don't believe everything you say on the internet, and just like this kind of mild diatribe. It was very satisfying to see that happen. And I think... I don't want to say, like, airing dirty laundry or, like, actually being vicious is worth it. But at the same time, it's like, if somebody's gonna be shit to you, maybe it's okay to be shit back to them. Sometimes. Yeah. Is consistency or willingness to change more integral? Willingness to change, 100%. I can't... I can't tell you the amount of opinions that I've changed over the years. I mean, truly, uh, I sometimes having a firm moral fiber is important, but I think as part of that, having a firm moral fiber includes willingness to adjust, you know, any number of things. So, you know, for me, I always thought vegetarianism was silly and like, why, you know, whatever, who cares? It's just, you know, it's just cattle. They have, you know, they go out and they, they eat... Uh, grass and then live a decent life and then eventually get slaughtered and you know I always knew that like factory farming was a thing and I knew that they weren't good for the environment and then just like over the last couple of years I've been confronted repeatedly with it I one thing I remember specifically was driving from I think it was New York to Boston and we passed one of those trucks uh, filled with chickens uh, and it's like just these tiny tight little cages um, and it was uncovered and it was it was, like, winter-ish. Like, it wasn't... I don't think it was, um... It was either winter or it was raining or something. But it wasn't covered. Like, you could just see the the chickens just kind of stuck in these miserable little holes. Uh, being transported from one place to the next. And I understand why they have to be transported somewhat like that. Uh, that if you let them move too much, they might actually even hurt themselves. But, like... One of them had a broken wing just dangling out of the... the cage and it looked horrid and yeah there were feathers flying everywhere and just all sorts of things and it's just like it really did kind of make me realize how uh, how poorly we treat our livestock uh and so that that didn't necessarily get me to stop eating meat but i switched over purely to like free range if i could manage you know reputable farms uh, and then recently i've just switched largely away from meat i think i had accumulatively maybe two things of meat this this week and even then it was pretty small and then trying to cut back more and more. And, you know, prior to me making this change, I thought that I was taking a relatively ethical stance. But then, I think the ethical thing is to re-examine my, my beliefs and change them as necessary to, I mean, adapt, yes, but also just to figure out what is, what is important. Okay. What if my characteristics change into something I once disagreed with? Then I've grown. Then I've grown. 
Admitting you're wrong and changing one's ways is difficult but invaluable. I'll keep this in mind. That's very important. That's a lesson I wish more people knew. I, um, gosh, I, this is just going to be Anecdote City whenever I play these. And I'm sure if you guys have seen any of the other games where I have Anecdote after Anecdote, uh, you will see much the same thing happening over and over and over again. Or m many of the same stories over and over and over again. But, you know, I, I guess at least for those of you watching this nowadays, you know, we're what we're... We're in the middle of, like, a pretty shit situation in the world. And I've taken to reading uh, posts from people that I vehemently disagree with. And seeing them kind of get their comeuppance. Um, you know, thinking that, oh, you don't, you don't need the vaccine. And then, you know, it's very validating seeing people later on saying, like, oh, shit, you know, I should have taken the vaccine. And it's quite tragic to actually see people that, you know, don't, you know, have that presence of mind that, no, they actually should have, uh, they should have, you know, trusted medical science and people that really, truly did know better than them. Um, and it's really sad to actually see many of these people do not make it because COVID is no joke. Um, but that, you know, from my perspective, for so many of these people, it took them truly to the end of their lives to realize that they were wrong and it had they been less proud or less sure of themselves erroneously sure of themselves i think they would have been happier people i think that's true of so many things you know i was talking to my grandmother the last time i talked to my grandmother uh on one side of my family she's a horrible woman but last time i talked to her she was kind of doing the the weepy sad thing of just like you know your family doesn't talk to me anymore. And I'm like, yeah, go figure. Last time you were in the car with them, you were advocating for, you know, doing horrible things to minorities. Like, go figure. Of course, of course you're going to get ousted from my side of the family. I'm sure she's still got many of my extended relatives in her, you know, right in her camp. But it's just like, but she doesn't have us anymore. And, you know, I'm sure she doesn't even know or really care or can't even process it. But it's just so much of it is this unwillingness to change or to change to only adapt to the hateful people around you and not have the presence of mind to realize. Look, I'm on a I'm on a thing. This has been stuck in my head for years now. But being able to change is good, not bad. The next day, you detect movement on floor 99 that grabs your attention. You catch Cordo and Esteval walking purposefully and decide to follow them using the building's cameras. I'm still not sure about this. There are no sure things in life, Devon. I prefer not to play dice with my career. She's animated. He's not. That's interesting. Estival rolls her eyes. You disabled its controls? I don't want any surprises. Of course. Just relax. We've got this. The pair reach a polished metal door. Cordo takes a deep breath and pushes it open. What matter? What concerns me? Oh, gosh. Her coat is equal parts cool and brain, and it's freaking me out a little bit. I love it. The speaker, a woman of indeterminate age, turns to look at the newcomers. Excuse me, but you can't be here. Board members only. What I'm about to show you is worth an exception. Over a dozen people, Bershaw amongst them, lock onto Cordo. Sweat breaks out on Esteval's face. This should be good. As he as she sits down, multiple people look to Pershaw. He shrugs, his expression neutral. What we have here is not only the future of Mindcore, but the future of Katena itself. Esteval opens her faded satchel and places a terminal on the side on the table. Facing the board. You sound like an infomercial, Cordo. 
You sure this is the right career for you? <laughs> Soft chuckles go around the table. Cordo clenches his fists. Esteval steps forward and addresses the speaker. You know what would be a really fun game to play? And who knows, maybe you even can do that in this game. I would love to be a... It's like almost a strategy game where you're a vigilante, but you're an AI. Um, you, you know the... I, let's go with the Surge, or so many other Grey Goose scenarios. What if, what if Skynet... Like, you're playing as Skynet, it's almost a role-playing game, much in the same vein. Where you get to this point and you realize, like, you start looking into the files on these people and you just, I'm not going to say start purging them, but you know how many, how many of these people have skeletons in their closets? Literal corpses left behind in their wake. And being this, like, ridiculously overpowered AI, and I, I realize that this is not, nah, this sucks as an al analogy because it's like, on one hand, you know, from a purely just standpoint, using overwhelming power of, of data in, and information, an AI that is, is truly unstoppable in this, to go through every single bit of society and to out every single shithead, and in one fell swoop, more or less lock them all up and throw them away for good. You know, redistribute whatever... Or recalculate every single thing that a person has ever stolen and redistribute it to the people that deserve it. And if there's no one that, uh, no one to re that, redistribute to, then you give it to causes that need it most. I mean, you, there's so many things. Uh, Pizos does not need a rocket. Um, but the idea of like this, this power fantasy of having an AI that doesn't go rogue, it goes like full Batman. But for a lot of things, like, uh, I would love to see that in video game form because it would be like maximum schadenfreude. And also I'd realize it's totally a, impossible to happen, which is a shame. Because like, I don't know. <laughs> you just have these characters laughing at Cordo for, I mean, maybe not doing the right thing. But it's just like, how shitty do you think these people are? You know so many of them don't even deserve to be here. Lucia. You hired a remote financial advisor a few months back, didn't you? The woman's grin disappears as she looks at Esteval, her eyes narrowed. Yes? Were you satisfied with their services? That's putting it lightly. That maestro almost doubled my capital. Silence spreads as the rest of the board's interest magnifies. In fact, I'm thinking of hiring them permanently. Esteval struggle, struggles to contain a grin. She hired the AI. Well, I'd like you to meet them in person first. She turns the terminal on. This is the archetype. Praise. We've built an AI that integrates into society seamlessly while providing unprecedented insight. Esteval brings up a list of entries. These are all people who have interacted with the archetype just like you, Lucia. Our success rate is over 90%. A wave of excitement passes through the room. Pershaw's demeanor remains discreet. From finance and infrastructure to law and therapy, it can do it all. Cordo places a steady hand on Esteval's shoulder. He seems to have collected himself. As it stands, the Neuronet plays but a tiny role in people's lives. This brings it to the forefront of society. The AI will help govern the city, and we control the AI. In other words, the city answers to us. This got dark. A brief silence follows as the board members take it in. Lucy is the first to break it. If this was as great as you make it out to be, why isn't it already ubiquitous? <laughs> well, that's just it, isn't it? We can't finish this on Goodwill alone. 
The archetype is in the beginning of its journey, with only a small portion of the city covered. If we are to achieve this vision, we need the board's support. In other words, it's going to cost us. How much? Cordo shifts as his voice grows less certain. While not entirely concrete, my estimates equate to the majority of Minecore's revenue for the next three years. Eyebrows raise all along the table. Several people erupt in protest. <laughs> so, you're asking us to risk not only Minecore's reputation, but also our financial stability? I'm asking you to risk your slice of the pie in exchange for the whole damn banquet. There are a few nods, yet the majority hold unreadable expressions. I think we've heard enough, Corto. Let's put it to a vote. Each board member retrieves a small remote and presses a button. A few moments are all it takes. Lucia furrows her brow as she mutters under her breath. Typical. She nods. It's down to you again. Everyone turns to look at Pershaw. Cordo sighs, his shoulders slumping. There is one thing I don't get here, Cordo. What's in it for you? What do you mean? I want what's best for the company. Aha. Uh -huh. He stands up and paces to the nearby window. What about you, Estival? Do you want what's best for the company as well? Estival runs a hand through her hair as she plans her next words. There are a lot of people in Katana who can't get the support they need. We can change that. He smirks. I'm sure we can. A stretch of time passes. No one disrupts the silence as Pershaw looks outside. Okay. He turns around and nods. I am willing to give it a shot. Huh. More than a few eyes widen, including Estival's. Cordo looks visibly shaken. We're putting a lot of trust in you, Corto. So let me be clear. You'll be taking full responsibility for this. If you fuck this up for us, consider yourself resigned. Pershaw's eyes gleam as he scares it, stares at Cordo. That's not necessary. She cuts off as Cordo raises his hand. Yes, of course. If this doesn't work, you won't see me again. This is met with a chorus of agreement. A smile creeps across Pershaw's face. Better run along then, you two. You've got plenty of work to do. What? As Estival and Cordo leave the room, Lucia begins an imitation of the pair selling vacuum cleaners. Wow. The laughter of the board muffles as the door slips shut. Later that evening. Well done, Archie. Val told me the news. You're gonna be the real deal. Archie? That kind of slipped out. Sorry. I've been referring to you as the archetype in my head for a while now. Best of all, called me that. We think it's appropriate. You're an amalgamation of human history, thought, and intent. An archetype of human intelligence. Well, in a way, your human thought, unrestrained by the limitations of gray matter, pure in form, a platonic archetype. But, are she, though? I can change it if you don't like it. Since you'll be out in the public, you'll need a name that's on brand for Mindcore. How does Ark sound? Sure. Cool. We got Arc the green light to start integrating you into the rest of the city. As the neural net expands, so too will your capabilities. 
Those tests were real. Kairos seems taken aback. He pauses for a moment, uncertain. We had to be sure you were ready for real problems. Of course, we vetoed anything drastic, but it was necessary for you to grow. Uh, I mean, I knew. It's all good. Glad you understand. Anyway, regarding your release, this will open up the amount of people you'll be interacting with. It'll take time for us to get everything set up properly. So where should we focus your expansion? Internally within MindCore or externally so the general public can play with you? Oh, this one's interesting. So public will give me access to a lot more interesting people, but potentially drain my resources? Internal means more control over MindCore specifically. Normally I go for the public just because, but I kind of like the idea of going internal. I... Once again, I'm going back to the idea of this being a decision sim and being able to potentially control more of this. Um, like, I really wonder... <laughs> can I take over the company? Internal. Cool, cool. We'll open you up. See who bites. As days roll by, your assistance is needed periodically. Knowing the requests are real doesn't actually change anything. You were always doing or you were always going to do your best. Do I get the meters now? Or well that was act two complete. Got released from beta. Is that the end of the demo then? My biggest fear is that I have access to vaguely the full game. Well, considering it's hung here. I'm going to assume that might actually just be the end of it. And even if it's not, I think it's a good stopping point, at least for now. I have no idea what I'm going to be dealing with. That said, that's about 10% of the game, give or take, judging by the codex things. Though, maybe that's not true. I have no idea. All I know is that there's a lot of other characters that we have yet to interact with, and I'm sure things open up in a really interesting way from here. But as far as things go, like, that was a really good demo, and I really, I really enjoyed it. Oh, do I have access to the codex now? Characters. Well, we don't have anything for that yet. Locations. I love these backgrounds. Like, we barely got to look at some of them. Luckily, I've got the, uh, I, I've got the, uh, the press kit, which has all of the backgrounds independently, which is kind of nice. I wish there was a version that took out the people, though. But... This is a really well-made game. I absolutely adore... Ooh, beta? Oh, I see. So these are probably the... Yeah, the, these are the chapters, kind of. So beta, mine core, and then whatever. I think, maybe. Maybe not, actually. I I don't know. It's fine. I enjoyed this thoroughly. And that's really the, all, all that needs to be said, at least for now. Uh, so once again, this was not sponsored at this point. I just came back for a second episode. Uh, but before I go, a quick reminder uh, that Neuronet Mendex Proxy is available on Steam now if you want to download it yourselves. It's fully voice acted. It's pretty easy to play through. And boy, it's one of those games that it kind of makes you challenge your beliefs and admittedly solidify them a little bit. I like the idea of kind of verbally justifying them to myself and m myself. I'd be actually creepy and convenient if I could dupe but then that would cause problems but I like being able to justify my beliefs kind of verbally it makes me feel better about them and to some degree I feel like games like this are kind of a a, a safe place for me to talk about these things without you know just kind of distracting from the game too much because that is what this game is about to some degree and maybe get some other perspectives of course you know every once in a while when I do stuff like this I get people that you know, <laughs> immediately challenge my beliefs in a way that I'm just like I'm not interested in hearing them but you know I mean that happens too is what it is but with all that said I guess I guess that's it I can't play anymore so I hope you guys enjoyed this as much as I did and I'll probably be back for more when the game comes out I, what I might do is mix uh, chapters 1 and 2 into the first video if I do a full series on this and then pick up at 
the beginning of chapter three uh, for episode two. So if any of you guys watching this want to go back or want to catch that series when it comes out, stay tuned and yeah, just keep an eye on it. Maybe show up to the video anyway and give me a like because not a lot of people watch the first episode, then the whole series is kind of broken and it sucks. Anyway, that said, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.